Okay, everybody, just waiting for Rinpoche at the moment.
Hello, Tashidele, everyone. Okay. So I let everybody in, wait for a few minutes, then we will start the session. <clears throat> Okay, Tashidele everyone. Okay. Well. Okay. Okay, so then today we are going to start our session with the prayers and the mandalas as usual. And then um, after, after that, then I will start the, the, the teaching. Sanji <laughs> Tonium <laughs> Sanjay Mm. So, good evening and good morning and good afternoon, everybody. And uh, today, I'm very happy to do this teaching for all around the world, you know, uh, from our mainland, China, and then also in India, and also in Taiwan, you know, all the different, you know, Asian part of it, and then also all the European and South American, North American, so coming together, and uh, which is good for me, so I don't have to repeat so many times, you know, <laughs> you know so yeah, so that makes easier, otherwise, um, hard to repeat several times, and, and sometimes when you're a little bit exhausted, and then, you know, it becomes less explanation automatically, uh, so I'm very happy that I can focus with full energy, 
you know, and dedicating to all of you. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so last time, uh, I hope that all the participants, I hope that you have watched the last uh, videos um, so that you could, you know, understand where we are and what is the topic. And those who have joined for the first time, uh, I will just give you a quick summary and the purpose of this um, the purpose of this teaching is basically um, you know all of us when, when we are introduced to a Tibetan Buddhism and we we are very much carried right away into the direction of have to receive empowerment uh, or either it goes to the direction where people say oh I don't need empowerment uh, everything is emptiness uh, and then that is a very dangerous um, way of practicing um, because then you know then you are just simply assuming everything you know you are just you know spirituality you, know, you are just based on assumption only you know not a really a clear structure and that is very that can be very dangerous over the time you know and like an example like in the in the time of the Buddha in the time of bodhisattvas and all the great masters, there can be um, a circumstance where there can be a one master, whether there can be one student, and then the one empowerment is enough for the rest of the life, one practice is enough for the rest of the life, and so on, you know. Uh, like an example, um, the biography of uh, Lord Buddha Shakyamuni, you know, Theravada says that, you know, the Buddha was never transformed into a Kala Chakra, you know. So they believe that the Buddha is what we see, and that's it. I don't know. So, but in a as a Tibetan Buddhist practitioner or the Tantrayana practitioner, uh, you can say that we believe much more than that. You know, Buddha transformed himself into the Kala Chakra form. You know, and then teaching all the Tantrayanas, and then also you know creating this Tantrayana uh, path, but. It is not just a shortcut. It is for the individual who already have some sort of a development, you know. Uh, so, so therefore, it is very important. I find that to have a little bit of ground as a foundation, as a practitioner, and uh, the more you have a solid ground, the more faster you make the improvement. The 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 the, the fragile the ground is. You know, the even you can make a great leap forward, you know, like an example, great, you know, saving time and thinking that I want to receive this secret practice and that high practice and this high empowerment. The, the uh, how do I say, at the end of the day, when you go in that high speed, um, what happens is that um, you are surrounded with the lack of understanding of oneself. You have a lack of understanding what is, Mahayana, you have lack of understanding of what is Tantrayana, you know, so you have lack of understanding about what is the meaning of love and compassion, um, you know, because you kind of push all that away from, you know, for, for, from a far away, way before. So therefore, when the more we understand about the Mahayana, uh, and then also the cycle of suffering, and then the more we can understand uh, you know, tantrayana over the time by itself, you know, without using any strength or force upon ourselves. And this lamrim is very beautiful. The reason why it is very beautiful is because all this different method or different explanation, um, it is kept under uh, like an example, a one cycle of meditation, two cycle of meditation, three cycle of meditation. Right? Uh, so the cycle means you read that one line or two line, and you think about that, think about that, meditate, think about that, meditate, think about that, you know, so that applies to the reality of the suffering, right? Uh, and then also the reality of the impermanence, the reality of the samsara, the reality of the, the preciousness of the human life and also the vulnerability of a human being as a human being, you know. Uh, and then also not just that examining the very existence, uh, the, the, you know, the cycle of life 
uh, of the heaven, the demigods, and the human realm, uh, and the demigo uh, how do I say, uh, the hunger ghost realm, and the cold hell realm, and then the hell realm, you know, so there's uh, so many uh, different details about that, where you can truly reflect upon oneself, not every single part of the cycle has to wake you up, not that, it's just that some of them can really reflect you out of thousands of them, out of hundreds of them, you know, so that is our aim, so you don't have to feel motivated each cycle of meditation or analytical meditation, you just, you know, out of many, have few that can truly benefit you in the long run. You know, so that's something that um, we have to keep in our mind. And that is why the Lamrim is very important. And also the Lamrim is um, uh, written by Taranatha. And, you know, he is a great master around like the 14th, 15th century. Mm, and, uh, you know, so I, I'm very big fond of him as a master, as a writer, as a teachings, you know, all the instructions. I, I feel the sense of openness, sense of frankness, you know, and I find that very important when you read, read the instruction, you know, so you can feel their personality, their approach, their, their love, their, you know, their caring towards the next generation, you know, whoever may be reading. So therefore, I I have chose this text. You know, so these are the reasons. So last time we have reached at um, we have reached at 463. Um, that's where we have reached at last time. <clears throat> uh, and now we are now we are entering into the chapter of uh, um, impermanence. Yeah. So don't uh, don't tell yourself I have seen the meaning of impermanence and the teaching of impermanence so many times and uh, I'm I'm done with it. You know, don't think like that. You know, because like I said, just listen. You know, you don't have to. Ha you, you don't need to have a tears. You know, pouring from your side of your cheek. Uh, you don't have to abandon anything. You know, you will still have your husband and your wife and girlfriend and boyfriend, you know, you will still have your job, you know, so nothing will change by listening a little bit of impermanence, you know, so don't have too much concern about what you may realize and what you might do all, all of a sudden, you know, don't, don't worry about that, you won't. Uh, so just relax, yeah, okay. So, um, and then just before we go into the teaching, you know, the teachings of the Lord Buddha, the purpose of the teachings of the Lord Buddha, ultimately, is to make us fearless. That is the purpose of the teachings of the Lord Buddha, you know, not a fearless out of ignorant but rather a fearless out of clarity and wisdom. You know, in order to uh, develop a wisdom, some people, they call it intelligence. Some the people, they call the realization. Some people, they call it a pure wisdom. In order to obtain these you know, um, supreme qualities, we must create some sort of a reality to you know, to distance ourselves from the idea of the fixation a little bit, not too much. You don't have to force against anything to yourself. You know, if you're forcing against your will, then you have not realized anything. So don't force anything against your will. Try to practice what you feel comfortable with. But any moment that you are practicing, you are generating uh, some sort of a gap from the self-fixation. And that is good. So long as we go in that path, you know, positive result will come. And then the uh, wisdom will appear. Uh, realization will come over the time. You know, so therefore, our purpose by understanding all this is to create, you know, fearless. Like an example, you know, there's a distinction when there's a good practitioner 
and the so-so practitioner, you know, when they die, especially, you know. So like the, the average, you know, average practitioner, you know, average practitioner will say, I have, you know, uh, you know, I have my three jewels and everything is up to them, you know, and my, my future, my path, my destiny really falls into their hand and their hand only, right? So that's the average one. And then if you are, a, you know, a really a good practitioner, you know, then, you know, and when the death of the time, the moment of the death appears, and then you will say that uh, I have nothing, I have nothing left to uh, succeed uh, or achieve. I'm good, you know, whatever is done is done. Everything is good. I'm ready to go. You know, I welcome it, you know. So, uh, so like the people who are more advanced practitioners, their perception of the reality is much more vast, you know. When you have uh, very much self-fixation in the time of death, you know, in the time of death, then, then you have uh, so much fear, you know. And then if you are average practitioner, then you say, I make a prayer to Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, my destiny, my future really decides by them. If you are more advanced practitioner, then you say, there's nothing left to do. There's nothing left to be done. I'm satisfied. I am fulfilled in this very moment. I welcome this reality, you know. So there's a sense of fearlessness out of realization, not out of arrogance or ignorant, you know. And that is also something that sort of a mindset will also tend to appear when you do a good retreat. Yeah. So you don't have to wait and see until the time of death. <laughs> you know, that sort of mindset, uh, you know, will appear in your mind when you're doing a good retreat or good practice, a fruitful practice, you know, not just any practice, but rather a fruitful practice. So when you have this sense of genuine practice contribution, and then due to the result of accumulation of that genuine practice, not just any practice, but genuine practice, by the result of that, you know, you will tend to have some sort of a state of mind and that I have absolutely no regret. Even I, uh, even I leave this uh, body in this very moment, I have absolutely no regret, you know, and then you are, you are able to live in that experience. You know, you are not thinking with your intellectual. You are able to live with that absolute, absent from everything, that sense of clarity and experience. And you know, it's not recognizing the nature of the mind yet, but still you can develop this kind of very beautiful, liberating mind, you know some sort of sense, you know, a great sensation of liberating, but beyond the idea of whom to liberate and uh, how to liberate and none of that headaches, you know, but rather pure experience of liberation, pure experience of true freedom, you know, and then these are the experience that you can succeed, you know, you can achieve this experience, but, you are still vulnerable to many confusion, many obstacles, you know, so, yeah. Okay, so. Tenzin Yiba Namji Chame Samba Ni Ogo Nam Chisam Du Tse Tung Ra Masi Namji Chame Wai And then Tara Nata is saying that all of us our life is not just short, but also everything is uncertain. You know, there's nothing certain about it. Namji chame means namji chame means there's nothing that you can be sure about it. That's number one. Kalte kalte te wangi lege pamselu tuju dinju tempong sejang rana la kalu tezan So 
you know, uh, those who have accumulated a positivities in their past life, we might have a chance to live a little bit longer, you know, like the 60s, 70s, you know, and so on. But I think in my explanation here, uh, my comment here is that in order to live long, you know, in order to live long, you need to have a, a less fixation to the mind itself. Uh, and then I think the body will last long by itself. But if you, if you don't have awareness in the mind, uh, you will be always vulnerable, no matter how much you think that you are not vulnerable. So having a some sense of awareness to the body and the mind is the key to the longevity, you know, not as a paranoia person, but rather, you know, awareness is very important, you know, for the care for the body, to care for the mind, you know. You see, uh, you know, many people, you know, they, they, they care so much about how they look, you know, and then they cut from their face, they cut here, they cut here, they cut here, they cut here, you know, and then it looks like a mannequin, you know, and it's no longer a human being, you know, there's so much going on, you know, they cut so many things, and it's, I'm not talking about women, I'm talking about everybody, you know, men, women, everybody nowadays, you know, so even the living is not worth it, you know, if you live like that. You know, so, you know, so, and then some people, they, they want to show off so much, you know, they also don't live their life fully, you know, they're not living a life for themselves, they're living their life for others. That's also very much not a life, I would say, you know, because you are living your life for others, you know, you know. Your reality is the perceptions of others and the judgment of others. And that is not truly living, you know. In order to understand the meaning of impermanence, you also have to understand what is the meaning of living, you know. You cannot say everything is impermanence, let's just get a little bit, you know, afraid and, <laughs> and get panic and practice the Dharma and do nothing, think nothing. It doesn't mean that. You have to know as a human being what is the meaning of living. You know, if you know the understanding of meaning of living, then you understand the meaning of impermanence also simultaneously. You know, yeah. So I think that is very important for all of us to, uh, to keep in mind that, you know, to analyze our life a little bit time to time. You know, but for some people, their profession is mainly on, you know, like they have to go to the office and then they have to wear certain clothes, certain type of clothes, you know, and they have to socialize with some people, then they have to wear certain type of clothes, certain type of behavior, certain type of layer of personalities, you know. And of course, you do all of that, please enjoy your life, do whatever you want. That's what I always say, you know, do whatever you want. But try to make an attempt to make some sort of improvement when you do have a time. You know, try to make some sort of a distinction. You know. so, so therefore, you know, in order to understand the meaning of uncertainty, you have to understand what is the meaning of certain, certainty. In order to understand the meaning of impermanence, you have to understand the meaning of permanent. You know, if you just simply see it like, a, you know, oh, everything is uh, alive, is bound to die, and then like in a very dis despair, despair state of mind, that is not really helping. That is not really renunciation. You know, like an example, you know, living, uh, living is about knowing that we are breathing out. We are breathing in, that's living. If we put our mind in that, I'm breathing out, I'm breathing in, that's a human being breathing, using our organ, oxygen. You know, when we stop breathing, we are dead. You know, 
so no matter how advanced we think we are, when the time of death occurs, nothing really matters. You know, so yeah. Okay, so let's go to the text. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kaka <laughs> Like an example, you see, um, uh, in, in the Taranasa's teaching is saying that, you know, in the time of death, the enemy doesn't matter, the friend doesn't matter, the fame doesn't matter, the wealth doesn't matter, none of it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter anymore in the time of death. You know. Imagine, like right now, we say that this is me, this is who I am, this is my passport, this is my identity, this is my home, this is my family, this is my family history, and this is my family heritage, this is my vision. You know, we have all these ideas, right? That's, you know, that's like the really the good ones, you know, the already a good circumstance. Uh, and then, you, you know, you have a heart attack and it and poof, it has gone. Then all that voice of I'm this and I'm that also gone along with it. And then that's that's what the death is. You know. So analyzing what it what truly matters, you know, uh, to reflect to oneself is very important. Yeah. Like an example, I'm a Buddhist practitioner. You know, I don't tell myself, hey, guess what? I'm going to do this when I'm 70. I'm going to do this when I'm 60. You know, I don't, I don't plan that. You know, I say, okay, everything is good. But if I'm bound to die, if it happens, then I accept that. In that in moment, you know, my protector, Sikhsama, Kala, Avalokiteshwara, them as my refuge tree, them as my witness, and I'm satisfied with that. You know, that the quality of satisfaction improves and, you know, over the time as you accumulate the quality of practice. You know, a little bit like a, a mindset of uh, no suspicion, no doubt, no suspicion, none of that pure, genuine sense. You know? Yeah. Um, the, you know, like an example, the earth, as we can see it, you know, is constantly changing. Uh, sea is constantly in change, the weather, the element, everything is constantly in change. And we don't need to speak too much about ourselves as a human being. Sharaga Pumbundini, Nyamre Chung, oh, Midden, Dengi, Nabin, Nabin, Dengi, Nabin, 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 So now I was reading this text, you know, before we went, before we started this session. Um, uh, I catch that one. Semla Rawamato means we we have we do not have a liberation of our own consciousness. You know, sem um, sem means consciousness. Rawa means liberation. You know, matop 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 means got it. You know, matop means didn't got it. So we haven't got a liberation of our consciousness. Uh, so I was thinking about that and, uh, you know, like I said before, 
you know, if you have awareness to the body and the mind, and then even there may be a lot of obstacles, you know, you may be able to overcome more easily. You know, there's the obstacles of spirit, there's the obstacles of human, and then there's the obstacles of health. You know, so the less fixation there is, the less resistant there will be, you know, from the opposition. You know, so I uh, like an example, you know, uh, like an example in, you know, Mm. Uh, like an example, like a Buddha Shakyamuni, you know, in a time of liberation, the you know the next day he was going to be enlightened, and um, but that night he was surrounded with uh, many different illusions of the Maras, and then also uh, many 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 delicate and beautiful objects as well to lose his mind or to be distracted, uh, you know, but yet, you know, he overcome all of that, not by resisting, not by fighting it back, but rather based on, you know, non-violent and then also non-action and pure state of clarity, you know, and then, you become, uh, you, you, you liberate yourself, you know. The more you play the games of the samsara, the more you stay with it. You know, the less games you play with the samsara, then there's the less to do about it. The less you do about it, less to think about it. Less to think about it, more space in your mind to meditate, you know. Yeah, similar to Alma. and they and so therefore and coming to the conclusion that you know coming to the conclusion over the time there is absolutely no depth beyond your perception you know and understanding coming to the conclusion that there's there's so many things that you try to analyze as the ultimate solution but every solution tend to be without any depth you know without any profound meaning, you understand? So everything seems to be a lot of solution. There seems to be a lot of solution, but when you analyze all the solution that we see it, you know, truly as a human being, there seems to be a lack of profound, meaningful uh, impact. So when you understand that, then you come to the conclusion, uh, that everything is very much uncertain and that death can come anytime and it's a possibility, you know. So having that kind of a joyful perception is very important, not like in a very sad and upset perception, but rather, ah, that's what it is. Ah, okay, I see, mm -hmm. I understand, you know, and meditate a little bit on that thought. Mm -hmm. uh, in Ludu Gishalne, Ludu means Nagarjuna, Shalne, Chiwikin the Mount, Chiwikin the Mount means um, there's so many possibility of death or obstacles towards the death, you know, that leads towards the death. Sumba Yin, Chung Zijig. And then there's a very rare of rebirth or birth, you know, or absent of death or absent of obstacles, let's put it like this. Uh, uh, but even there's uh, some sort of possibility of a short-term liberation or short-term happiness, but that also is bound to change or bound to be death or bound to end or bound to be uncertainty or so on. 
So therefore, with that understanding and that conclusion, you practice dharma. You practice truth. You do not practice religion. You practice truth. That is the distinction. If you practice religion, then you do not question anything. You just believe, 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 believe. You practice truth. You practice Buddhism. You question everything, you know, and you practice the truth. You know, with the unbiased approach. That is Buddhism. You know. Okay, so even as a human being, you know, our own human being, human form, you know, has so much bacteria. Let's put it like this: so much uh, virus and bacteria within our own body, and that is, you know, resistant to any external, you know, bacteria and the virus. But then over the time, that also, the very thing that is making you survive also can cause a trouble in the long run, with the deficiency. I mean, when you think about it, it's not really that beautiful. You know? <laughs> you know? We, we think that, you know, we think that what I wear, what I eat, how I live my life, that's a good life. When we think that we can predict from, from that moment on, you know, if we have a control of our rent, if we have a control of our home, family, job, large amount of money, everything, we think that we can control everything of our life, our future and so on, which is true. I do not deny that, which is true. But there's no guarantee, you know, uncertainty happens all the time. Yeah. But instead of being fearful, we have to shift that mindset into the Dharma, into the practice of truth. Um, <clears throat> Like an example, like an example, when you eat something, getting a food poison, you know, such as like that, uh, such as eating a wrong medicine, also, you know, having a consequence of that. We experience that a lot, especially in the modern world, you know, uh, where the, the medicine becomes more and more business rather than the individual benefit. You know, so, you know, that in, like an example um, before is like the physician engaging one after one individual after another. And even the tools are not advanced. The engagement is very much advanced and very personal. You know, and nowadays, the, you know, how do I say, it become more and more business rather than engagement to the personal. And the religion is also becoming like that. That, that is also another problem. You know, Buddhism is also becoming like that, similar to the pharmacy uh, company, you know, feed everything the same. <laughs> you know, there's no personal link anymore, you know, so like feed everybody the same, give one thing, make sure that they're satisfied with that. Don't give anything more or too much secret or too much special. They will ruin it, you know, or something like that, you know, so we have to be uh, careful and you have a responsibility as a practitioner you know uh, it's a it's a in, you know even the one individual makes the different movement you know with the spirituality you know it it makes a bigger change over the time if nobody dares to make a move then nothing ever happens anyway you know whatever the uh, the you know different issues we might be facing um, so therefore, you know, the reason why I say this is because I am uh, very disappointed, you know, I get really upset when I hear people say to me, I am doing, you know, my wonder practice and I need to finish 100,000 of this and 100,000 of that, you know, they, they specify 
that enlightenment is about reaching to a certain numbers. And that is a big problem. You know, we, that is a big problem in our society. And then when you transform that spirituality also based on the numbers, how much you have accumulated, and based upon that, you obtain a higher happiness, which is the same trap, you know. And so you have to avoid that habit and rather practice genuinely with a sense of awareness, mindful, with our body and the mind and the speech along with it, like all the great masters in the past, the way they said it. I'm not adding anything new, you know, so, yeah. Men love us too big, we are not seeing a chicken do, and chicken do, jude, the solar, go again, can you put us over the way, when it, done in a, nam she chame, yam dung gom, so that's the sixth cycle, like an example, thinking of all the different possibility that can lead to the, you know, the unfortunate state of death <clears throat> or sickness or any sort of. Tenzin Sumba and Tenzin Sumba la Chiwala Chim Chim Mayimba Chija, my friend somebody, she get to Shiwale. She's a Kibo Sumba and Ningi Chimship. And you better, she will do now. No, no, Zem, my Maya, then do it, I mean, Kerami, eh, Yandro, your own, your own, drink, Tamaku, Chicam, she, a rala, Chuame, and Jesu Tamayame, and De Tamje, eh, Chedre, Chibichin, and Jinny, and Jun, and Gungu, and Danyan, the other Tamje, a Dacian Dinjar. So, like an example, the second chapter is about of the meaning of impermanence. The second chapter of impermanence is to remind ourselves um, that when the death occurs, nothing actually, uh, you know, matters. You know, no matter the, how many friends or families or allies or and so on. And just like that, when you have that more capacity of understanding, and then you go to the, you know, towards the enemy, you know, that understanding. First, you think about the family and friends and so on. And then you go directly, you know, towards the enemy, you know, in your mind. <clears throat> like an example when you think about good news also none of that matters when you think about bad news nothing really actually matters um, you know so thinking about all the impermanence and like an example you look at the you know you look at the country here uh, around the world nowadays you know, 40 years ago they were fighting each other you know and brainwashing their own uh, you know civilian saying that that is the enemy and there's no other enemy than that and that you know and then again 40 years later 50 years later 70 years later they become friends and families and relatives and crossing the borders and things like that you know so you reflect that as a part of impermanence you know there's a there's a progress in everything and then there's also a lack of progress in everything. So you also reflect that that is also impermanent, impermanent, you know. Yeah. Namjila Jar. Uh one teta Jesu uh Medana Jesu Tanyamna Rangi Sab. Uh Lang Yadin with Jesu Tan, the word Jesu, then should the Shadam uh Dollar Never in Gioya Pans on Dejan Dalabim Mill and should then run you shiny and get on Devon Matova. Draw time to chill on it, kind of cuisine, and draw a camber, camber, get a lever to chase some butter, some butter, tether, tether, no, never see, new to see, namji chami. Chami. So it's saying that if you have a tendency, even in your mind, you know, even after thinking all of that things, if you still have a tendency saying that, 
Hmm, I, I think I can I can still go on a little bit like that. I can still have it some sort of a justification and so on. If you do have that kind of a desire coming up in, in your mind, and then just tell yourself, Gedan Digba Matopa. Gedan Digba Matopa means all only the um, the virtuous and the non-virtuous qualities of mind is something that it will follow along with you, you know, for your the next life, you know, let's put it like this. Or you can call it a good karma or bad karma or a virtuous action or non-virtuous, you know. So therefore, understanding that only these things matters in the beginning. And then over the time, of course, the, the, you know, there will be more profound method of practice and way of you know, practicing it anyway. <clears throat> and then ultimately, you know, Finally, at the end, thinking that Dedar, Dedarna, Nyeparchi, Nyurduchi, Namchi Chami. Dedarna, Nyeparchi means, uh, you know, the death is, you know, something that is a possibility and it may come very fast and it is very uncertain. Whenever it comes, it comes, you know, so there's nothing you can do about it. So therefore, the, it is the only the Dharma that they can help me in the time of death. So therefore, I shall really engage myself in the path of Dharma and so on. So having that sort of mindset. So I think here is the point that where I want to put some sort of a comment from my side. When people think about the Dharma or the, when they think about the practice, they think about visualization of the deity, having a tantric practice, yoga practice, and dream yoga practice, and they you know, create a lot of illusion about There's so many different types of practice. You know? And the, the, the practice is very simple. The purpose of the practice is very simple, and the practice should be very simple, because the purpose of the practice is to block or break away from the cycle of illusion. You know, so if you are unable to minimize um, the sensation, the sensorial level world of, you know, keeping things in cycle, if you could not minimize that, then of course you cannot minimize the impact of the negativities either. You know, so having some sort of awareness to the mind, reflecting and understanding the reality of the suffering, the reality of the impermanence of the death and so on, you know, time to time, gently reminding yourself is very important. Okay. So that's the seventh cycle. So now here comes some different practical uh, method. <clears throat> so uh, he's saying that, uh, so there's a five word to think about impermanence. So if you cannot understand everything about the impermanence, then just keep the five things, the five, mm, five words, let's put it like this. Dela tsavit sikna she chas, tsavit sikna, this is a five word. Tambo mindu in jurbasam. Tambo mindu in jurbasam. Shenda shiwa mandusam. First, you, you know, think about, you know, First, you think about, you know, a reality circumstance that is going against your desire, you know. 
Tambo Mindu in Jerusalem, Shendashiva Mandosam, and then you reflect the meaning of, uh, uh, you know, then you reflect to yourself about other sentient beings that is passing away, passing away, passing away. Uh, and then the third is the possibility of death of all the sentient beings from so many circumstances again and again, again and again. And then also the fourth one is Chikan Jidan Junyungu. What will happen in the time of death and what will change and so on. Um, so once there is a death occurred, what will happen after that? What will happen after that? What does it really happen after that? Uh, so like an example, when I was a child, I was like that. And when I was a kid, I was like that. When I was a teenager, then I was like that. And now currently, I'm like this. Then I'm walking towards the death, day by day, getting closer and closer. I have a very good example of impermanence. Oh, my hair, that reminds me of impermanence. Oh, before I have a hair over here, then it goes yeah, Lama Bruno, yeah, also. So before I have hair over here, then it goes up, 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 up. Then, you know, when when somebody took a picture from my behind of my back, and then I thought, wow, who is this guy? <laughs> you know, and then I realized it was myself. Then that was enough for impermanence for a day, you know, for me. <laughs> yeah. Because no matter how happy you are, no matter how sad you are, the time continues. You don't have a control for like a stopping a movie. Yeah. And that continues until the death. And then that continues in the life in between. And then that continues to the next cycle of life. You know, so, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so therefore, nothing will truly benefit me, you know, nothing will truly benefit me other than the Dharma. So reflecting that into your mind again and again, a little bit. Yeah, like, that. like meditating. Yeah. <clears throat> Like an example, or oh, in my village, in my city, and there was a one person over there that also passed away. A few weeks ago, my neighbor was dead. He also, he or she also passed away. You know, reflecting, you know, the fragileness of the human being. Like an example, I think this, you know, uh, and I think this pandemic really gave us a little bit of impermanence also, you know. We say that oh, everybody has to get vaccinated. And, and of course I get vaccinated and so on. I'm not an anti-vaxxer or anything, just to be clear. <laughs> so, you know, I'm in like, in, because sometime in the religious group, they are quite strong, you know, like, oh, I don't do any of this stuff and things like that. Um, yeah, I do my vaccination and all that. But then again, there's an illusion of that, uh, that, that where you say that, oh, yeah, you know, a little bit like the death will never come. <laughs> but that's the, that's the illusion, you know. Yes, you will be protected from certain type of variant and virus and so on. But, but it doesn't give you the mortality, you know. You know like it doesn't make you the immortal being. You know, it gives you a you know a protection, of course, a physical protection, sense of immune uh, immunism, immunizing your body, absolutely. You know, but then again, uh, when we inflate our ego so much, 
And then it becomes a little bit like, oh yeah, it should protect you from any type of death, you know, like a little bit like the death never comes, you know. <laughs> there are people when they said that, you know, when they take an injection and they take a shot and then they think, oh no, the death is so far away. <laughs> it will never happen. And, but that doesn't guarantee anything, you know. So the death is bound to come. Whether you take a 100 shot, whether you take a two shot, three shot, doesn't matter. The death, the natural death is bound to come. You know, so that's another layer of illusion that we, that's another lie that we tell ourselves. You know, taking a proper medical care is good, it's necessary. You know, but then again, inflating your own ego more than what is needed is also the lie. And which is against the understanding of the meaning of impermanence. You know. So, Okay. Then, then as you know, in the draw, Rome, government, judges, and she's on the other year, she was ma, Dejan, Tizetum, she was chairman, do, Pache, do you remember? No, 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 just like any other neighbors and the villagers in the town that the friends and families and relatives that I've seen witness their death. And that is also, I'm, I'm also a human being, you know, I'm nothing different from them. You know? So not like say, you, there's a distinction between where you say, yeah, I know everybody dies anyway at the end of the day, you know, not like that, but rather really the death is always next to us. And that is a reality. And I accept that, and I see this, you know, and meditating with that state of mind, you know, not like I know the death is eventually there, N not like that, not like, uh, not like Amazon package and like, oh, just get it done and uh, send, it, send it to the shipment, you know, not like that, but rather, you know, like a very precisely, gently, you know, with your clear mind, say, ah, uh, everything is dying changing old you know uh, young is old and then even the young they die very quickly you know everywhere around the world it doesn't stop well, i am also like that i'm also a human being i must remind myself with the meaning of death the meaning of impermanence that is true you know and then we hold on to that thought and then you meditate for a few seconds you know, like that, not like, not a quick summary, you know. No. And then you show me, and then this is the thing you do. And then you should dodge and tether. He did a book, Ranchin in Monday. I'm not a tether case, said to him, or Jesse, a and so basically what I just explained to you right now is explaining again. Uh, like an example, poor getting rich, rich getting poor, and all of that. Uh, uh, and she will say, Mickey will sing it, and she will need you get a little so don't you surround you, and she will in meditation to talk about me. Nobody, you know, welcomes the death willingly. You know, death comes into their life unpleasantly, you know, so, and, and we are very uncertain about it, you know, it can come anytime. So therefore, the only dharma and the practice of truth can liberate that suffering. 
gashin kishin to chiwa mai nobody welcomes the death you know joyfully you know unless you are terrorist <laughs> you know th th then you're mentally you know something wrong with your head you know and like killing others and killing yourself and like you know that is just whichever the religion may be doesn't matter which religion just extremist ideology you know that kind of uh, fundamentalist you know that kind of people that's just that's just crazy people that's nothing to do with the buddhism okay um uh, so now here, here comes the more detail. Uh, so in a time of death, the body and the consciousness separate or splits. Uh, like an example when your body and the split from the, the you know consciousness and the body separates uh, and then you know some people will cremate your body or they may uh, just put it on the river like a ganga river um, where you will be eaten by fish and so on your corpse um, and then you know cremation um, uh, or feeding to the birds, you know, like a classic Tibetan style, you know, you know feeding to the birds and doing a chair practice and so on. Um, uh, and eventually there's nothing left. You know, eventually there is nothing left. You look, you, you look at the, uh, you know, how they say, uh, uh, you know, like a mummified, you know, like Egyptian mummified, you know, they preserve the body in, into the highest quality and yet it doesn't preserve anything, you know, it dissolves, you know, to the soil you know, itself. So, like an example, um, our state of the consciousness is molded and covered with all this ignorance and the illusion and then the, all the suffering, and we have no control. And when our when our body has some sort of existence, you know, if we don't utilize this opportunity, when our body is lost, our mind will be completely lost at that time, and it's already too late. You know. the the life between you know the pardo state i have explaining many times before but i will explain to some of you again you know the life in pardo is exactly the the the, the reality of the dream you know whatever you have the illusion in your mind that illusion becomes a reality and and not understanding that the very projection of your mind created that reality, not understanding that, and then having a lot of fear within the state of the dream. And then when you wake up and then you tell yourself, oh, I had a terrible dream, you know. So in a time of death, the pardo reality is like that, you know, not understanding that the projection of your reality is coming from yourself but rather perceived as a secondary, perceived as a, you know, a secondary vision or image or, or project. So therefore there's an immense suffering. And then in a time of the dream, of course, we can wake up. In a time of bardo, there's no waking up. So that reality and the illusion of that reality becomes your new normal. Therefore it is a suffering. Uh, 
Mirandri,你知道是,嗯,有年,得得了,所以,他们都被,就像是,他得了,嗯,就得,嗯,嗯,嗯,嗯,嗯,嗯,嗯,嗯,嗯,嗯,嗯,嗯,嗯,嗯
and then the the the, the cold suffering as uh, cold suffering realm and then the hunger goes realm <clears throat> so you know so as a buddhist practitioner all of you i think it's good to know these few things you know yeah it's good to know about the tantrayana and mahayana but also it's good to know about the heaven and hell and all the distinction in between and the reality of the, each of their sufferings and so on <clears throat> so yang su means killing again. Ting na means lining your body on the black, you know, basically measuring your body with the black ink. And dunjum means like more like a, what do I say, gliding with the two mountains, something like that. Ngubu uh, means just simply, uh, uh, you know, a crying, a loud cry, you know. Uh, uh, and then tawa. Tawa means uh, um, uh, suffering of heat. Uh, Rabda Tawa means uh, more ex extreme heat. Uh, Narme means endless. So all these are a different realm of suffering. Okay. So fasten your seatbelt, and this is where the adventure begins of the Lamrim, more exciting part of the Lamrim, you know. Because the before uh, the, the, the before one is always classical, you know, here and there, like all oh, impermanence and the reality of suffering, and the life is precious. Yes, yes, I heard this many times. But then this part of the hell is a little bit like reading the book from the Lord of the Ring, you know. You have all these ugly things, the ugly version of it. And then the best part is that Buddha does not control none of this, you know. All of these are destined by your own creation. You know, nobody is planning for you. Nobody is making it for you. You know, it is just simply based on your own, uh, your own accumulation of positivity or your own accumulation of negativity. Based on that qualities of accumulation, your reality is created by that. Okay, so that's the distinction from other religion. Let's put it like this. Uh, <clears throat> But before you come to the conclusion of the, you know, examining the reality of suffering of a heaven and hell and all that, uh, first you must think that meal, you know, the, so the life, human being, you know, um, you know, human life is very precious. But at the same time, I don't have very much time, and I don't have much time left, you know. So, uh, so reflecting to oneself. Uh, Uh, so we cannot just live forever. We are bound to die. And once we die, and then there will be rebirth. Uh, and then based on the accumulation of positivities and negativities, our reality changes based upon that. Right? So which I don't have to repeat again. Uh, so in the very foundation of the tanya, tanya means the hell, uh, the hell realm, the heat, the the extreme heat, suffering hell realm. Tanya tamjeke nese nese she rime lume rime lume. I think rime means no mountains, no hills, you know, no landscape, nothing. Uh, basically, no landscape, you know, no beautiful hills, nothing. Uh, no mim means uh, no air, and every reality is just made out of metal uh, and burning metal. You know, yimba, mechet trukan sam tautumbaro. Mechet trukan sam, like an example, or like trukan, like example, um, like a fire like this or like that, you know, uh, always burning everywhere, all the time. Okay. 
Nietzsche to go to the number of Rerong, Suno, Kulne Chaba. And so the, throughout all the land, everything around, everything is burning all the time, every time, non stop. Zanjun, Tojun, Shani, Shuata. Lenza number, so in Jusigi, and Jusin Shindu, Tawata, Tende Rigi. Um, so like an example there's all the everything that we see in this earth we see it over there but you are perceiving everything as a burning reality uh, even the even the woods and the trees are burning constantly uh, and it's made out of metal uh, and then it's filled with all the different type of animals and different type of workers, you know, uh, different type of hell workers and so on. Uh, uh, so they are filled with them. pardo. Hmm. Terekebe, pardon, Lungi, Devaso, Tanshin, okay. So we are born there by itself without any uh, circumstance. I mean, without any, uh, without any birth circumstance, you know, but rather simply pushed by the karmic wind. Not as actual wind, but rather more like you have no desire of I want to go here, I want to go there. You have no aim or direction. And you don't have a capacity to change that direction or either. So that's what it means, you know, naturally being there. So due to your accumulation of positivities and negativities, and you see the reality of the hell realm, then draw uh, so all the fire in the hell is the seven times of the heat um, of the earth heat on the earth fire let's put it like this and then and then as the hell realm goes lower and lower, the, 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 the fire heat, you know, goes seven times more and more. So that's the distinction between the higher realm of uh, hell and the lower and lower, the lower you go, the, the multiplies suffering continues. So your physical state in that hell realm is um, your body is very weak and very, very soft, uh, uh, you know, very you know, sticky and soft and whatever the worst scenario you can imagine, you just imagine it. Body and the mind both has a very minimum uh, duration of, of resistance. You have no capacity of resisting anything. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, and then therefore the suffering is great. Uh, so the the way they're born over there is just like the, when we open our eyes, you know, when we open our eyes, we say, Oh, I woke up right now. So the way they are pushed with the karma, and then all of a sudden they are they open their eyes and then they see that they, they witness that reality.
Dunga Mendrawa Susu, Kebarni, Yansuki Pensu, and Joa Me Shao Thomas Shedanke, Lato Lance, Sanja Numbosum. Chigla, Nuba Tomo, Tomba Mongo, so on, and Rishi, she was Jason Kendra. So Yansu, Yansu means um, it's a really comical, you know, if you don't uh, see it in a very religious way. Yeah, you know, like an example is in the, Dunga Mindra also Kebarni. Um, so the distinction, so Yangsu, Yangsu means killing again, right? So that's the name. Um, so you will see the other, you know, the consciousness, right? As a as a figure that we have talked about, very fragile and very sticky and very weak and very sensitive and so on. You see the other person like that. Uh, and then you also see yourself like that. Um, the moment you see the other person, you have a great anger all of a sudden without any reason. With absolutely zero reason, you are angry to that person just by looking at it. And, and, then, uh, and then all of a sudden you have a weapon in your hand, you know, all sorts of weapon. And then you're just screaming and going head on to that person. And that person also going head on to you. And then you just, you know, end up hurting each other yeah. and i don't think i don't think that is a you know hell reality anymore i think we you know ex existed in the human realm already you know we say my country is great you know therefore dying for your country is a great honorable achievement there's nothing honorable about it you know you know, suffering is suffering that's the logic that's the fact you know so, so like people kill themselves, kill each other in the name of the country, in the name of religion, name of ideology, and all these same, you know, just because the other person have a different ideology, different nation, the idea of different nation, and then we disagree the, before even we start talking. <laughs> we disagree before we even start. And that's the same. You know, you don't have to go in hell, you know, to experience. There's no dialogue, there's no talking, there's no communication. Yeah? Oh, you're that part of that, you are part of that ideology. Okay, I disagree with you. And there's no middle ground, there's no common sense. You know, so that is the that is our reality. We are living in that reality. You know, so you don't have to go very far to experience that reality of suffering. So, yeah, like an example, like race, you know, I am Asian, you are white, he's black, you know, therefore I'm better, you are worse. Then we compare ourselves, we hate ourselves. And so, same thing, you know, whether it's a nation, ideology, race, you know, all these are same purpose, and that is fighting among each other. Without any reason, there's no middle ground, there's no compromise, nothing. The same thing, you know, you see each other in that very moment, instantly you you have a hate and anger and then you hold a sword and weapons and then you start hitting each other and hurting each other. Um, uh, so, number tumbu, mambo sonwana. And then you cut each other, hurt each other until you have broken into pieces to pieces, you know, to each other and uh, so on. And then all of a sudden you collapse. You collapse. And, and then from the from the space of the hell, from the space of the hell, there will be a cold wind that will come. Uh, and then that wind will say, now kill again. <laughs> that cold wind, you know, will say, start the match again, or a little bit like that, you know, start killing again, now, or something like that, you know, and then you again awaken, and then see your body like that, then again, you see the other person with so much hate, you carry the object, you cut, you keep on hurting and cutting each other until you collapse, then the cold wind comes again and say, Repeat that again, uh, repeat the killing again. 
know, so and that's one, uh, seven juicy, and yeah, when she tab so young she young she young so uh, uh, seven maybe to the years. So that's a one, uh, that's a one of the explanation of hell. So I will go for one more, then I will stop. Okay, this very, I like it very much. You know. It's very exciting. Tingna ni shinjit namgi nyewe sim simjin te lila tingna po mambo talte so lechu basa tiu shu shogun sunja nambo chabo so yate te yang tu tu chana menji oh that's even worse okay me tu chana tu 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 te ke tu sin tu ndawa o so that's very short, so I can finish right now. So all the, you know, animals that we have killed, you know, uh, over our lifetime. So these are the very animal that, you know, that they appear. And then they start working on our body. You know, they put a black line, you know, measuring in our body. So, um, so as they make a line where to saw your, you know, where to cut your, you know, body partial, you know, the partial of your body, where to cut. As they finish the upper body of cutting, your, your lower body heals again. As they make the ink and they cut the lower body and the upper body heals again. In the, the reality is that you suffer continuously again and again, again and again, a little bit like a small passing out Again, re-emerging, re small passing out and re-emerging again, and that doesn't stop. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, so then they put together the upper body or heels, and then they cut the upper body. In the meantime, the lower body heals. And then they cut the lower body, and then the upper body heals. You know, so... Uh, so that the time goes like this and so on. That's a very good way of ending the teaching today. <laughs> and there will be more exciting stories and I love that. So any, uh, I think one or two questions? I should do a two break, um, to break from the cycle of illusion. Do, mm, okay. do you have to focus on breaking the emotional attachment to that illusion? The, the most important is that, you know, you practice, um, you just practice Dharma and and let the positive effect do its work by itself. Long story short. Don't have too much idea. Oh, I have to detach that. I have to detach that. I have to detach that. That really doesn't work. It, it, it feels like it works. But then that, that very idea of I need to detach, I need to detach is also a fixation. You know, as... It sounds very good because where you give the justification to yourself and say, my mind is aware, right? My mind is aware of the distraction. So if there's any unpleasant emotions, I make a judgment, you know? I make a projection, an idea of the judgment. So that's bad, that's not good and so on. So the more you are fixated in that, you are not truly liberated from the illusion. The liberation from the illusion means simply living in the state of awareness without any fixation or idea of I need to be aware or that is a distraction and so on. Okay. Um,
thank you very much. Uh, is God or any God uh, uh, even a bigger illusion? That is the question. Um, my answer is that all the deities are necessary illusion. You know, in order to overcome our ordinary illusion. And then over the time, that necessary illusion also becomes unnecessary. Because of your quality and accumulation of the quality, you know? Uh, Sing Sing Sun. Uh, everyone has killed beings consciously or not. What do you suggest we do? Uh, my suggestion is to read Sutra. That's number one. To uh, to renounce all the negativities of accumulations, and then along with it, practicing bodhicitta and practicing daisy practice over the time. So. I think that's it for this time. And I want to say thank you to all our um, European part participant, North American, and also the South American Brazil. And uh, also in India and in China and Taiwan. You know, so I want to say all the participants who have come over here. I know for some of you it is very in inconvenient because it's not a weekend. You know, so because on the weekend I have the live teaching, so I cannot really do too many things at one time, you know. So I want to say thank you so much for all our translator here, you know. So thank you for helping everybody for translating and uh, thank you for all the participants for being here. And I want to say many tashitelek and all the good wishes to all of you. And uh, next month, I will do the teaching uh, from America, you know, so there will be a different, slightly different time zone for me, but it will be the same, same thing for everybody. Nothing changes. Okay, so have a good day and good evening, everybody, and thank you very much. And in the meantime, please be safe and be well. And I do my six Ama Kala Puja every morning. So all of you are in my prayer all the time. So thank you. Okay. So nam de tam jinzi bani, tam nene venda nam tam jinzi gigana jen balam tuba yese benzo lendo wando refu changju senju rimbo jen magen banam kechu si ke bani amba me bodam kone kondo pe wara So the page number is four hundred and eighty. I loved it. Thank you, everybody. Take care.